yourself. It's a very crash diet mentality to simply banish negative thoughts and adopt a sunnier outlook. But unfortunately, the research shows that the just be happy approach rarely works. If this mindset has failed you as well, take heart. Let's recognize right now that the typical motivational advice in this vein doesn't seem to bring many changes for anyone. It's not you, not you at all. But new research illuminates a path forward. Studies increasingly suggest that depression and anxiety disorders are not caused by negative thoughts. In fact, every last one of us has negative thoughts at times. Instead, depression and anxiety are caused by negative thoughts becoming sticky. Even medications for depression and anxiety, like SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, are now thought to decrease depression and anxiety by reducing this stickiness factor, rather than just reducing negative thoughts themselves. The good news is, the cognitive behavioral and mindfulness techniques in this book can do this too. And we've got the data to prove it. But it does take some work, including rethinking the very nature of your mental life. In this book, I ask you to open yourself up to understanding your thoughts and your body in a fundamentally different way. To start recognizing in your own life the cognitive traps that zap your energy, kill your motivation, and upset your calm. You might have carried these around for years, and it will take time and true effort to change these patterns. So many of us have been sabotaging ourselves for a very long time, over and over again. And then we sabotage ourselves once more by imagining there's something wrong with us since we can't seem to get our emotional lives on track. If this is you, you are far from alone. For more than 20 years, I've studied, taught, and practiced the science of thoughts, emotions, and behavior. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist who has long specialized in treating anxiety, depressed thinking, and the ways in which stress affects our health and relationships. I've spent nearly a decade and a half teaching about dysfunctional thinking patterns and the disorders that arise from them on the faculty of Georgetown University. But many of you know me from the work I do with quote-unquote everyday people. Not just my clients or students, but those who have written to me over 15 years' time for my baggage check column and chat in the Washington Post, my blog for Psychology Today, or from the very first seed of this book, planted in the Detox Your Thoughts Challenge I created for BuzzFeed. What strikes me most is just how common the struggle against dysfunctional thinking is across all walks of life. I've heard from so many of you over the years, a wide span across ages, genders, and gender identities, races, ethnicities, education levels, sexual orientations, incomes, the problematic thinking patterns we take on are an epidemic. But as sad as it is that so many of us are suffering, we can take comfort in the fact that it connects us in a very human way. We're in it together. And whether someone is coming to me for therapy, meeting me during my university office hours with an apologetic request for personal advice, or writing a desperate note to me from halfway across the world, I see this struggle over and over again. I see you, and I hear you, too. In this book, I've sought to create, all in one place, an action-oriented, systematic plan for learning the techniques that are usually taught only in certain newer types of psychotherapy. So many of us know we need a better way of relating to our brains, but the how, and even the what, can be particularly hard to figure out. And yet, the answers are out there. They are buried in the research, but they shouldn't be. They are the light behind my client's newfound calm. They are the baggage check updates I get filled with gratitude about how the techniques have helped. Because the techniques do help. And now it is time for even more of you to learn these tools, to start on the path towards substantial, positive change. So I am here to tell you, there is not just hope. There is specific, concrete help. And it works. No one is a fundamentally flawed human being. Not you, not your neighbor, and not even that jerk who cut in front of you at the toll booth. And no one's thought patterns are fundamentally flawed either. They just need a shift with some genuine effort and the desire to change for the better. 
The potential for neurological change is even baked into...